It doesn't matter if you're delivering a product at the end of the day. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're coming in and helping people build homes or you're a lawyer, an accountant. It doesn't matter what you deliver. If you're in a service-based business, the experience and the relationship you build is everything. Here's what took me 10 years to figure out. The quality of work is not enough. Doing better work is not enough. Having a terrible experience, but at the end saying, don't worry, you're gonna love it in the end, is not enough. Because how someone feels about the work is more important than the quality of the work. It is not an objective thing, this is a subjective thing. And so when I was starting, I would look at other businesses and I'd say, I just need to up my quality. And then we upped our quality. We delivered amazing quality. We delivered better quality than other companies. And we'd say, why aren't people flocking to us? Like our work is so much better. Why aren't they realizing it? Why aren't they coming to us? And it's because other people own the relationship. Other people gave amazing experiences. If you own the relationship and you give a great experience and you do work that makes the customer happy, it does not matter if somewhere, somehow, some other way, there's objectively better quality or better work. It doesn't matter. If I love my accountant and I have a relationship with my accountant and I feel good about the work my accountant's doing, it doesn't matter if there's someone better out there. I'm not looking for someone else. And someone who comes to me and says, hey Mark, I'm a better accountant than your accountant. I don't like that person. <laughs> I've just spent 12 years building a relationship with this accountant and working with this accountant and I didn't even know there was a problem with this accountant. And now you're coming along and telling me that the decision that I made to work with this person was a foolish decision? Are you gonna win me over that way? Or on the flip side, let's say that my accountant was terrible to work with. What a pain in the butt. They're so rude and uh, they don't even realize how abrupt they are and that, that they make me feel stupid. Every time they ask me a question that I don't have the answer to, I feel dumb. I don't like working with this person, but they do, they do really sharp work. I'm not gonna stay with that person long-term because at the end of the day, the quality of the work doesn't make up for bad experience. How about we don't use our amazing quality as an excuse or a crutch for pissing people off? Because ultimately, your business will bleed clients, they will walk away and they will leave you or they'll never come to you if you don't figure this out. And so there's three ways that you can look at this. When you're trying to go out and get business from other people, you have to realize that as you approach them, you can't approach them with a we do better work than everyone else unless they're looking for better work. And when you approach that person and you say, hey, I know that you have a relationship. I know that you have a great experience with this person. I know that you're happy with this person, but let me point out all the ways that they're doing bad work for you or ripping you off. It's risky. You will make that person feel foolish. You're pointing out all the ways that they've made bad decisions. I don't think you're gonna win as the bearer of bad news in this situation, even if you're doing it out of love, and even if you wanna help that person. And then there's the clients you already have. As a service-based business, you cannot have bad experience, bad customer service, bad project management, all of these bumps along the way, and somehow think that when you deliver the work, they're gonna say, listen, it was a really frustrating process, but that was really good work, good job. They're gonna say, Wow, you know, I'm happy with the outcome and I'm happy with the quality of the work. There's no doubt that the quality of the work isn't there, but it could have been better, guys. That was really frustrating. I, this shouldn't have happened and that shouldn't have happened. Like, that's what they're left with. How people feel about the work is more important than the quality of the work. And it took me 10 years to figure that out. Maybe I'm slow. Maybe I should have known this earlier. I don't know. But it took me 10 years to figure out, like, aha, experience is everything. Even if you're in a product, this matters. Product-based, e-commerce-based, retail store, all of these things matter. Experience always matters. So here's what you have to do. You have to start detaching yourself and actually looking at, are you as good as you think you are? Or do you have raving fans? At what point in the process are people more plugged in and more excited and less plugged in and less excited? Are you building relationships? Are you frustrating people? Are you making them feel foolish or stupid? Are you intimidating them? Or are you making this an amazing experience? Because if you have amazing experiences, people will not look at other places. They'll be happy. When that person knocks on the door and says, oh, I can have someone who's better, you're gonna say, no, I already, I already have an amazing person. I'm not looking for someone else. I have a relationship with this person. They make me feel great. This is a huge blind spot in companies.
People do not focus enough on customer experience. They have customer service, they deal with complaints. If someone goes to leave, they're gonna throw everything they can at people. But how about we treat the people who are already our clients better? How about we don't only focus on getting the sale, pouring love into the people for the sale, and then pouring love into the people when they wanna go somewhere else? Hey, how about we treat our current customers with a tremendous amount of love and respect. How about we look at our current process for delivering it and make it as streamlined and friction-free as possible? How about we make onboarding feel amazing so there's no question of doubt? How about we get our shit together so that way people don't see the mistakes that are being made? How about we do all of those things? How about we build credibility? And so if you're not good at this, you have to get good at it. You have, to, you have to figure out a way to get better at it. Because I have clients who have been with me since day one for 12 years, and if I call them up, and if they drop me an email, if they reach out to me on LinkedIn or call me up, I will respond immediately because I feel like I owe it to them. They've been with me since the beginning. And then I have other clients who come and go and this and that, and they don't really value what I have to say, and they don't really care about what we have to do, and we can't really help them that much, and they're not that open, and they're not tra that transparent. We deliver the same quality of work, whether we love the person and they love us, or whether we're frustrated by the person and they don't love us. The quality of work doesn't change. But what's the difference between the person that I've had for 12 years from day one and the person who works with us once and then disappears? It comes down to relationship. And it comes down to, are we providing the experience that they need to fall in love with us? And that's on us. It is so easy to rationalize this away. There's always a reason, right? Every project, every, every customer that comes to you, there's a reason. And you can rationalize a way where it's like, well, this, there was this issue or there was this challenge or there was this thing. Um, oh, the client reacted in this way. We couldn't have anticipated this. We didn't get in front of that. There's always a way to rationalize this. You can't be using that as an excuse. You can't be relying on quality alone as an excuse. None of that really matters. Because in the client's mind, they feel great about it, then everything else is forgiven. I go out for coffees and lunches with my clients and I have a few clients that I can be really, really open and transparent with. And I can say, I think we suck at this. Like, how do we get better at this? And they will help me. They wanna help me get better at this. I can say like, I'm not sure about the team and how do we do this? And when you make a mistake, when there's a bump along the road, just be really honest and transparent. I had a call last week with someone where I had to say, I had to say like, I feel, I'm getting the sense that we somehow offended someone on your team. Help me understand this. I, I, we have great intentions and you have great intentions, but I'm like, I'm sensing something is happening. Can we just be honest and open and transparent? And can you just tell me what the issue is so we can try and address this and get this fixed? Because if we go on like this, basically what it's gonna be is like, yeah, the, the work is really, really good, but you know, whew, it was really bumpy along the way. It's a nice way of saying that we were jerks or unsympathetic or didn't make them feel good or didn't build up trust. We didn't do something that they felt we should have done. And we're not mind readers. So, hey, red flag is waving. In my gut, I feel like something is going on. We have an internal conversation about it. We're like, what is happening? We can ignore it and we can be like, oh, don't worry. The quality of the work's gonna make up for it. Or we can call them up and say, hey, what's going on? Like, I'm, I'm, am I misreading this? I'm getting this weird sense. All we wanna do is help you with this and do this and do this and do this. And, and I, I, I feel like something's going on. What can we do to fix this? How can we change this? Is it is a mishmash of people? Should we restaff the project? Should we add a little bit more time? Should we do a regroup? Um, did we misinterpret something? Is there a miscommunication? What is going on? Because ultimately, I don't only want to deliver amazing work, I want them to feel great about it. And that's what we should strive for with every single project. If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.